Hello and welcome again to another episode of Battle Ready. And today, we're talking Nurgle. So, uh, I thought we'd talk a little bit about Nurgle. We did this before with the Stormcasts and with the Auric War Clans books. Nurgle here is the new Battle Tome. Uh, the third one that came out for Age of Sigmar 3.0. It's gotten its FAQ, but not a, not a whole lot changed. Uh, so, there's no big... But what did change? Uh, there was one command trait that changed, one oh, well. battle tactic that changed. Uh, but the battle tactic's totally different. But the, but the, is the battle tactic that changed to feed the maggots? Maybe. I don't remember. Please, that one's so hard. So, but the changes overall pretty minor. Pretty minor. So what you get here is basically what's being played. And so the question is, all right. Maybe you're looking at getting into Warhammer. Maybe, you know, Nurgle sounds exciting to you, the god of plagues and disease. And, and really, it's just a, a different form of life. Um, giving his gifts. So maybe you're thinking, all right, I want to get into Age of Sigmar. I want to start this Warhammer thing. And is Nurgle a good one to start with? Well, one thing I want to preface this is uh, we're going to give you some yeses and noes, some pros and cons for starting Nurgle. None of it really is about power level. We're not competitive gamers. We've played at, at zero tournaments. So we're not super concerned with what's going to be the winningest army and have the best list and that sort of thing. We're, we're more concerned what's going to be fun, and in this video, what's going to be fun for a new player to play. So is Maggotkin, is the army of Nurgle, a good one for new players. Um, rather, we'll give our sort of opinions at the end, but we thought we'd go through some yeses and nos, some reasons why and some reasons why not, and then maybe you can decide from there whether or not it's something that, that speaks to you. All right, let's start with the positives. Nurgle. I think the best thing about Nurgle in this, in this in, uh, iteration is its thematic play style. And by that I mean you feel like, I mean in the lore, Nurgle's this disease thing. He sort of is slow moving. He just trudges along and the corruption just falls around him, right? Yeah. And that's sort of how the army plays. You have a yes. lot of things that are they're pretty slow. There's not a lot of speed in this army. And they're constantly infecting people with disease. Mm -hmm. So even just being near them, just being near Nurgle, they're already starting to corrupt you and disease you and they're grouse. And so that, if you like that sort of lore, if that sort of thing is cool to you, you will get to see it on the tabletop. It plays a lot like that. Yes. Thoughts? No? You like that one? Yeah. You've, you've played Nurgle now, right? Mm -hmm. And you like that aspect of it, that it feels that way on the tabletop? I just like the way you can get up to seven mortals. Get to seven diseases, yep. <laughs> and yep. just clean sweep them. All right, so that's one reason why this is good. So if you like the lore and the theme, this army leans into that. It's not one of those armies where the, what you, the experience on the tabletop is different from what you, you would think. And there are some armies that are like that. Like... Blades of Corn is a little bit like yes. that. Yes. Blades, they're weak. Well, they're not weak. And but, health. But, it, well, even then, it's... it's it seems like the kind of army that would just run up and smash face, but it has so many little bubbles of, oh, I have to be within eight inches of this guy. Oh, and this guy has to be over here to get me within uh, 16 inches of this, that you end up having to manage all these bubbles. And so the experience is, I'm playing that, not really smash face. run up and smash face. So, um, and every army has that to a greater or a lesser extent, but Nurgle, Nurgle's pretty good on that one. All right, number two. Uh, the mortal side, so there's sort of demons of Nurgle and then mm -hmm. mortals, mortal followers of Nurgle. The mortal side is pretty elite. Yes. And by that, I mean the models are very strong, but you don't get very many of them. In our fact, our current list has 26 models. Yeah, our Nurgle list has, no, I don't, is it? Oh, yeah, it's 26. 26 yep. models. So that's not very many, that's a whole 2,000 point army with just 26 models. And I think that's actually really good for a new player because one, that's less, few, uh, fewer things you have to buy. You don't have to buy box after box after box of 
zombies or something like that. You can just have a few things. This is but, what he's been doing. Yeah. Careful. Buying your 80 zombies. But not only that, when you're learning the game, it's nice to have fewer units on the tabletop. Right? There's just less to keep track of because you only have six things out there doing things. Whereas if you had, like, Night Haunt, you might have nine or ten units out there. That's what I started with, and I got it fast. <laughs> That's true. But, I'm, and for a lot of people, they might that might be the thing that intrigues them, right? And they could go the demon side, which isn't super uh, you probably get hoardy, but it's more hoardy than the mortal side. You, get, you probably get triple the models. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But that can be something that's good for a new player because it, it lessens the confusion. And if you're just learning how to play, if you're trying to figure out which heroic actions are good and how to do different, you know, um, how to play with the system a little bit and go through each phase of battle, having fewer models and fewer units is going to be helpful because mm -hmm. it's going to get you playing the game. Disagree? I disagree. Hmm? I think having more things is going to be helpful because if you go from less things to more things, you think it's going to be chaotic. Like, you, there's no way you can manage this much stuff. And you'll forget someone. Whereas if you start with a lot of stuff first, you're used to having a lot of thingies. Mm -hmm. So then when you have less thingies, you, you already know how to manage stuff. Good point. That's true. If you do start with a, with a bigger variety army, like the Night Haunt, it is easier to go down to a smaller army. That's yeah. certainly true. Then vice versa. But I do think that if you're if you've only got one army, mm -hmm. right? You're bar you're brand new. I think this is a point in Nurgle's favor. Okay, number three. One of the things that Nurgle gets is a five up ward army wide. Now, what that means is anytime you take damage, for every point of damage you take, you get to roll a die, and on a five up, you don't take that damage. You are disgustingly resilient. And that is super satisfying. I find it very satisfying. I can tell you when I'm playing something like Stormcast or something without a ward save very commonly, when I take the damage or when I take mortals and it's just like, okay, I guess I took those mortals. <laughs> Nothing I can do about it. Let me just mark the damage. It's sad. It, it's like, ah. But having that little fail safe, even if, you know, on a five up, it's only happening a third of the time, right? So I'm still taking two thirds of the wounds on average. It's it's like I get something, right? It's like, oh, I'm taking damage, but I still get a chance to... Like Night Haunt, but Night Haunt's yeah. worse. Yeah, Night Haunt's a six up. A lot of death armies are six up. Oh, uh, wait, is that the same with Soul Blight? Yeah, Soul Blight has a six up. No! <laughs> so it's like, you know, I like that about the army, where even when you take damage, you always get one last chance. And so as a new player, right, if you take mortals, it can feel, it can feel bad. You're like, oh, there's nothing I can do about this, really? I just take the damage? But with Nurgle and the army-wide five up ward, you don't have to worry about that. As you much. always get to try something. Now, it won't always work. No. Right? It's a five up. It's not a two up. Unless you're like Lu Master McLuck pants. <laughs> Unless you're Master McLuck pants. So it's not a guarantee, but you do get that opportunity, which I like. All right. Number four. As a new battle tome, this comes with new Path to Glory rules and... If you haven't played Path to Glory, you should definitely look at that. In fact, that's probably the best place to start because it's a great way to grow your army organically over time. Right? Organs. Or they, they love organs. 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 Organ trail. Organ trail? <laughs> but um, the Path to Glory rules in Nurgle specifically are pretty cool. We're going to start a new Path to Glory pretty soon. I'm leaning heavily towards Nurgle. Instead of Cool Boys. And uh, super duper fun. Because they have a whole system where you can corrupt different territories. So normally you conquer and acquire territories for your warband. But with Nurgle, they can actually corrupt them and bring them into the, the foulness of so the Garden of Nurgle. So does that mean you Nurgle. can even corrupt a uh, wasteland? I'm sure I could, but it would also give me nothing. <laughs> so that is pretty cool. But the Path to Glory rules, again, super thematic and really build into that. So if you wanted to create a war band that's focused on corruption, you know, you don't get a chance to corrupt really on the tabletop because you're just fighting a single battle. But over a Path to Glory campaign, you can, you can corrupt things. And that is that is pretty cool. I really want Gloomspite to get a battle tome. 
Yeah, hopefully they will by the end of the year. That's、uh, they need it. They do need it for sure. Because I did an entire Path to Glory campaign of ten battles and they didn't get one. No, but yeah, we've got those guys. We can always up- port them over when they do get their battle tome. Okay,、uh, last reason to start with Nurgle. Nurgle, if you are looking for your first army, especially if you're new to the hobby, generally, Nurgle is easy to paint. Easy to paint. No, it's easy. Not because you get to work in a small number of colors, right? You're looking at、uh, yellows and greens and, and sickly oranges and everything. Fa- no pastels, right? Everything's faded out. Earth tones, a lot of earth tones,、um, and they're supposed to be gross, right? They're、so、supposed to be、nine. messy. But I mean, they're supposed to be messy. So even if you are Painting real careful, and you make a mistake, or、that's、you're afraid you're going to make a mistake. That's fine. It's fine, right? It's very forgiving to painters, and then you just slap some wash on it to dirty them up even more. They they really respond well to the sort of three step process of base coat, wash, prime, or I mean not hot prime, highlight,、Sorry. and then they all got all these cool little like sores and and buboes and stuff on them. And so you just you can just paint those in little different colors. It's it's really fun. They're could, fun to paint. If you got a pox bearer, you could paint all his buboes rainbow. Why just not? Make a rainbow guy. Why not? Just make a rainbow man. Heck yeah! You can have the because Nurgle has many plagues. You your army could be infested with the rainbow plague. Yeah. So <laughs> that actually be scary. It would be it would be gross. Any any kind of plague from、you're、Nurgle would be a, pretty gross. You'd be being attacked by a rainbow guy. The unicorn plague. <laughs> So, where they all have horns. Oh wait, that's what the plague is. If you're at all worried,、have. you're like, oh, I want to get into Warhammer and stuff, and I think it'd be fun to play the game, but I'm just, I just don't want to paint. I'm afraid I'm going to mess stuff up, or I'm afraid it's going to be too difficult or time-consuming. First, I did a video about painting a little while back. Don't worry about it. You, if I can paint and I have almost no artistic talent, then you can paint. And it's a skill like anything else. It's not practice comes perfect. Practice helps. Now, some people have natural talents and gifts, and that's that's for sure a thing. But it's a skill, and if you practice it, and if you just keep doing it, you get better. So I think those are the five reasons why. If somebody said to me, "Hey, looking to start Warhammer, I'd like to start with Nurgle. What do you think?" I would say, "Heck yeah! Thematic play, elite at least on the mortal side. Five up ward, satisfying. Path to Glory rules are great, and easy to paint." Is, Or maybe not easy. I mean, I think easy, but really, it's forgiving to paint, right? You can make mistakes, and it's still going to look fine. It's going to look fine. In fact, I was painting up some nerglings today or yesterday, and I、uh, did some、uh, contrast on them. Some Naz, no, some、uh, Achillean green, which is a turned out to be a little bit more blue than I thought it was.、Mm. And so then I went over it with Nazdrag yellow. And it was really cool because the guys I didn't paint everybody green, but the guys that I had painted green, I mean the blue, okay, it was Achillean green, but it turns out it looks blue. I didn't Achillean paint Achillean blue. Yeah, but when I hit them with the yellow, they turned this gross sickly green, and then the ones that were still on from the primer, they turned sort of the yellow color. It ended up looking really good, all from a mistake, all from just a shoot. I shouldn't have used Achillean green there. So. Really, really good. Now, Achillean blue. Achillean. That's what they should have called it. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a ocean blue. So there's some green to it, but it's definitely more blue than green. Why would you call it green when it's blue? Yeah. Wrong name, I guess. All right. We Now, change the name. Somebody comes to you and says, "Oh, I really want to start Nurgle," and you, what, what, are, what are the pitfalls? What should I watch out for? Okay. Here, here are the possible no's on Nurgle. Not being a great army to start with. The first one, even though I love the thematic play, is the disease mechanic itself. Yes. Every time you get in touch with a unit at the end of combat,、movement. at the end of movement, and any time they roll a six, they get disease points. But what that means is you have to track disease points individually for every unit on the battlefield. And at the end of every at the end of every turn, it resets to one. So you might have gotten them up to six during the course of a turn, or seven, and then it resets back to one. And then you have to do the accounting again. So 
what I've done to deal with that is I bought a bunch of eight-sided dice. I use those to yeah to tick up, and that that works. But having to remember to tick them over every time and to tick, <laughs> all right. I just representing ticking. I see. Using head. And then, then tick. Head. Okay, here we go. And then tick them back. Ticking back doesn't make your head wobble. There we go. <laughs> and then tick them back. It's a hassle. It's a. It's it's a. Un, it's it's a lot of bookkeeping. Now you could do it with counters maybe. Bookkeeping. Nice. You could do it with counters maybe. You could do it with just writing them down on a piece of paper. So there's other methods of doing it, but it is a lot of bookkeeping. It's a lot of accounting. And it's sort of the main thing they do. It's their main battle trait. Although if you have a degree in math, this would be easy. Well, I mean, maybe easier, but you'd still have to keep track of it all, Uh right? Whereas there's nothing like that in most other armies that you have to keep track of constantly for every unit. I'm trying to think of another army who has I don't think any other army does have it. The closest thing are things like uh, Lumineth or uh, Caradron, where they have their ether gold. And they go... But they only have one, and then they spend it eventually, right? Whereas this one, it ticks up and down constantly, and you have to do it for every enemy unit that you touch. Until so, you heal them. So that is a, a pain. Until and so they you heal need to, themselves. Yeah, they can heal. So that is a pain you need to be aware of. All right, number two. Second thing, what makes you think, ah, I don't know if it's right for a new player. There is a big lack of synergy between mortals and demons in this book. Now, in some ways, it's sort of cool, some sort of fun. But most of the demon, most, not all, but most of the demon powers are to demons. Buff demons. And, and most, most of the mortal stuff mortals. buffs mortals. Like Lord of Blights and Plagues will buff Blight Kings. Yes, so they'll buff the, Blight Kings, which, which are other mortals. Which is standard yep. uh, And mortal. then your Sloppy Bile Piper or your Spoil Pox Scrivener will, will buff, buff plague demons. Right? Plague Bearers in specific. Yep. Well, uh, yeah, I think the Scrivener is Plague Bearer specifically, but the Sloppy Bile Piper will do any of them. Yeah, but any it's... Demon. But it's better against with plague bears because you get a lot of them. So, if and the reason this is unfortunate is because there used to be, and I think you can still get them, are start collecting boxes. There's mortals start collecting and demons start collecting. Yeah. And those are pretty good. I actually like both those boxes. If you want a demon army, the demon one is pretty good. If you want a mortal army, the mortal one's actually really good. But uh, I think they're discontinuing that because they came out with a vanguard box, which is like the new sort of start collecting thing they're going to be introducing. Mm-hmm. But it's mortals and demons together. Mm. And so you get a lot of stuff, and it's probably a really good value. But the stuff that you use doesn't play nice together the way that you would hope for. They might a new need army. to fix it in the next FAQ. Well, that's just what they. I don't think they're going to rewrite the whole book because they'd have no. to rewrite the whole book for that. They have to rewrite all, all those the lore. war scrolls, yeah. And all the lore. Ah, uh, they could keep the lore. But. So it might be a little bit harder to get into. And that Vanguard box. You might buy it and then start playing and then realize, oh, Please. I really only want half of this. Yeah. So that's something to be aware of. Or I want none of this. This is terrible. Yeah. I want I a that, refund. That could always happen. And then the last negative is the attrition play style. So the way that Nurgle tends to play, and you can play it a bunch of different ways, so there are ways around it, but sort of the, the regular standard way is attrition, meaning... You get out there, and for the first maybe two battle rounds, you're doing nothing. You're not maybe you're not getting a lot of points. Maybe you're not crushing people. You're not destroying mm-hmm. everyone. You don't have these fulminator-like hammers that just come in there and, and wreck face. Wait, you're referring to Stormcast with hammers? Yes, I am. But what you do have, <laughs> what you do have, is this this disease. So over the course of battle rounds, it's like mortal wounds, mortal wounds, mortal wounds, mortal wounds. And so by the time you get to the third, fourth, and fifth battle round. Suddenly they're so weak, they can't really stop you anymore. And the Nurgle people are pretty hardy, especially with their five-up ward. They're still going to be around, hopefully. And so in the third, fourth, fifth battle round, You're that's where they tend to clean up. So that kind of attrition play style can be difficult for a new player. Because the new player wants to get in there and start smashing. And when they start the game... That's what Iron Jaws are for. You for sure. start with Iron Jaws. For sure. That's how things work. You start but when with you start jaws. the game with Nurgle, you have to recognize that, okay... On this first battle round, I'm just going to be behind. I'm, and you have to be okay with that and know that that's how the army plays, but that you can make up for it at the end. And that's sort of an interesting, a counterintuitive play style. And so for a new player, they might get everything on the table and then be like, oh, my guys are not doing much this first round or the second round. 
And especially if it's the first couple games, they forget some abilities, they're not moving the way that they should, and they get crushed before they get to the third, fourth, or fifth battle round, they might look at it and go, ugh, this is Nurgle guys. I'm, I wasted all this money buying Nurgle guys because I don't like the way they play. So That's why you get the battle tome first, to see if you actually like them. Yeah, you should always do some research first before you buy models, because the models aren't cheap. You don't want to waste your money. Money. All right, so that's sort of some pros and cons, so you can make your own choice from there. But, question. Drake, friend comes to you and says, I really want to start playing Warhammer. I think it's super cool. I haven't chosen an army yet, but I really like Nurgle, and I'm thinking about starting Nurgle. Mm -hmm. Would you say, awesome, perfect army? Would you say... Uh, he might want to stay away from Nurgle. Or would you say, that's really good, but... Option C. Option C. What would you tell him? Uh, that's really good, but you should get the battle tome first to research them. Okay, that's true for every army. Yes. What about just specifically for, Mer for Nurgle? Um, you should watch out for how complicated the disease is. Mm -hmm. And you should watch out for if you don't like things that come in the first round, that don't come in the first or second round, don't choose Nurgle. Because Nurgle's slow. Nurgle is slow. Yeah, I think I would say yes. Nurgle's a good choice. I think overall, Nurgle is a fun army, and I think people will get a lot of a lot of value out of it. Now, um, obviously, like you said, buying the battle tome, or at least just researching the rules, even if you don't buy the battle tome. You look it up. You find the rules and see if it's sorted to your liking. But um, I think overall, the the positives, the thematic play, if you're into the lore of Nurgle, that really is cool, getting to set, see that on the battle top. A lot of the positives, I think, outweigh the negatives. So if someone were to ask me, should this be my first army? I would say, yeah, I think this, that's a good choice. If they asked me about some other armies, like Lumineth, or maybe even Caradron, I would say, well, here's some things you might want to think about. I like Caradron. Oh, no, I think Caradron's yeah. good, for sure. Fun. But when it comes to Nurgle, I think I would pretty much say, yeah, if you're looking to start Warhammer and you think Nurgle's cool, that's a good place. I mean, if you don't like Nurgle, if you don't like the models and stuff, don't, don't get, get some other army. Get one that you'll like. But if you like Nurgle and you just want to know, is this a good one to start with? I think I would say yes. Mm. Any final thoughts? Uh, nope. Nope. <laughs> no final thoughts. All right. I've already said my thoughts that are for now. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you so much for watching. This has been Battle Ready.